there, Cure fans? It's the Holy Hour Podcast, the currently weekly podcast. Welcome. I am Gavin, and uh, here we are as the dust has begun to settle in real time. The Shows of a Lost World Tour is officially over for now. The Latin American leg has wrapped as of Sunday night. And uh, over in Colombia, the last show was performed. So on one hand, we can all proudly raise a glass and toast to the band and crew once again. And their seemingly flawless shows further justifying why we all love and adore them more than ever after all these years. And congratulate them on yet another successful string of shows to close out an already stunning year of touring. But on that other hand, us Cure fans tend to want to drag shit out as long as possible, soak up every little last drop of life out of this and uh, anything Cure related before we carefully file away into the history books. So rest assured that my fellow nerds, we aren't quite done absorbing this tour just yet. Because we've still got some shows to cover. Yes, let's do another update. Not only are we going to cover Paraguay and begin to cover the finale in Colombia, but we're also going to kick things off with a rewind. Just one show back, back to Santiago, Chile, which uh, I know we technically already did the rundown for last episode, but I received a super cool testimonial from our new buddy, Jeremy giving us the full scoop on his experience seeing the band down in Chile. So let's rewind just a touch and return to Santiago, Chile. As Jeremy writes, The Blood Flowers Tour was the only time I had seen The Cure previously, so I was delighted to be able to attend two shows on the Shows of a Lost World North American Tour. In August, I was watching In Orange and lamenting that my Cure shows were over for this tour. Next thing I knew, I was looking up dates for the Latin American leg of the tour. I've wanted to go to Chile since I was in high school and fell in love with the poetry of Pablo Neruda. And when I saw that Santiago had a show, my heart just about stopped. My favorite band is playing in a city that I've romanticized for decades. A couple of Google searches later, I had a ticket to the show, plane tickets booked, and a hotel reservation. Everything came together before a forest played out on in orange. As I waited for the nearly three months to pass, my merch from the North American League started coming in, and this just added fuel to my excitement. I spent that time trying to get at least a rudimentary grasp on Spanish as I would be in Chile on my own, and from what I researched, only about 5% of the Chileans speak English. I definitely didn't get as much under my belt as I would have liked, but I was able to manage. The week of the show was jam-packed. I was working super overtime and hadn't had a day off for about two weeks, just to make sure everything was in order before I left the country. The Sunday before the show, Depeche Mode was playing in my hometown of Seattle. It was a perfect send-off. Finally, the day of my flight arrived. Travel time from Seattle to Santiago was supposed to be about 16 hours with a layover in Dallas. That layover is the only thing that went wrong. The flight was delayed 13 hours, so I lost nearly a full day in Chile. At least, it wasn't the most important day. I got in late Wednesday night and I caught a cab to the hotel. Right away, I was blown away by how nice everyone I met in Chile was. My driver spoke a little English. He asked where I was from, and when I said Seattle, he said, Grunge. Seattle. Grunge. Very cool. Very cool. Almost every interaction about where I'm from went the same way, which showed the passion for the music that is so big in that area. The stadium was about three miles from my hotel, and since I feel like the best way to know a place is to take it in by foot, I decided to walk there. It was a beautiful day. Coming from temperatures in the 30s in dark gray Seattle, the 80 degree blue skies of Santiago were a refreshing break. I arrived at the venue about an hour before the doors. There was a small line of people that had already formed. As with the U.S. shows that I was able to attend, I was impressed with the variety of ages of all the people 
and all the cure gear that they were wearing. When I got in, I walked down to the stage to start to figure out where I would position myself for the show. I decided to go to the merch table and maybe grab a beer before it all kicked off. The only beer I saw was from vendors walking through the crowd, and it wasn't one that I was interested in, so I decided to forego any libations. The merch booth was pretty sparse. The only thing that was show-specific was the poster. I'd already ordered that online because I knew there was no way that I was going to get all the way through the show in the pit and an international flight back with it in good condition. I got a general Latin American tea and ordered more Santiago gear online. I headed back to the floor to find the space that I would be occupying for the next several hours. The crowd kept flowing in. Around 5 p.m., the first of three openers took the stage. The cruel visions from Santiago were up first. They had a great neo-post-punk type sound. The drummer was doing some weird stuff that kept me very entertained. Up next was Frio Lento from Concepcion, Chile. They had big energy and, from what I could tell, a strong local fan base. Then, as we all know, was Just Mustard, easily my favorite of the three openers. If they come to Seattle, I will absolutely make sure I get out to see them. As the stage was set for the main event, the pit started to get very tight. I was about three rows back from the rail, trying to take in the faces of all these strangers that have a love for the cure in common. Then the rainstorm sounds began, and the anticipation in the audience was palpable. The stadium began chanting, Roberto, Roberto, Roberto. Everyone lost their minds as the band took the stage. As the first chords of Alone began, I felt tears running down my face. I hadn't cried at the previous two shows, but being in this beautiful place that I'd always dreamed of going to, and being around thousands of Cure fans that had waited so long to see their favorite band play again, or for the first time, I was overtaken by the emotion. It wouldn't be the last time during the show that I would feel tears of pure joy coming out of my eyes. The energy of the crowd was more intense than the shows I saw in the U.S. Everyone was dancing and singing every word. I think it was during Push when there was a major crowd surge. Suddenly everything felt aquatic but the water was made of bodies. When the swell was too much for the people in the front, they motioned that people needed to stop pushing forward to the crowd and stop the forward press. The main set was about two hours long. And when they left the stage before the encores, I had to get out of the pit to use the restroom and stretch a bit. So I watched the encores from the edge of the floor by Simon's side. It was still a great view and had a little room to breathe and a little more room to dance, which was really good for the pop encore. Robert promised to be back and said that the show was fucking incredible. And of course, I had to agree with him. Everyone floated out of the Estadio Monumental, full of bliss. I had planned on going to the after party, but after a full day in the hot sun and a big day planned for the next day, I decided it would be best to go back to my hotel and sleep. My trip to Santiago was more magical than I could have ever dreamed, and I will forever be grateful to the cure to inspire me to stop dreaming and start doing. It was an experience of a lifetime. All right, thank you so much, Jeremy. That's so cool that it lived up to your expectations and you had such a great time. Thank you for walking us back through that and sharing your experience with us. Sounded like an amazing time for sure. So yet another cool show and experience in South America. Let's move ahead to the next one. We've got ourselves a spot in Paraguay on December 7th, Thursday night, I believe it was. Another Primavera Sound show um i'm gonna tell you on the top of this one i don't have too much scoop there was no live stream that i could find uh professional or even personal there's rando clips floating around out there but as of now i still haven't found a full full stream at the time it was kind of 
kind of dead out there. I wasn't digging around a ton, but at the same time, nothing jumped out at me. So absolutely nothing to report on other than the set list. Unfortunately, they did stick pretty much to the formula. So like I've said a few times on paper, it might not look very exciting because they're kind of sticking very similar, surprisingly similar to uh, show after show here on this tour. Kyoto Song, which has kind of been popping in every other show or so um will make an appearance in this set list so we had our our fairly standard format with kyoto songs sprinkled in there as the wild card selection and um in encore one we did see the absence of want so unfortunately a variation in encore one but for, for the shorter set, <laughs> they had It Can Never Be the Same, Show It Sometimes, Plain Song, and Disintegration. Otherwise, again, still solid fucking set list. So clearly, if it ain't broke, don't fix it kind of mentality going and uh, seems to be working great for the band. Uh, it seems like energy levels were high on stage and in the crowd from what I could gather and uh hopefully another great show the poster i guess we can talk about because that one seemed to be a big hit amongst everybody online anyway uh the poster for the paraguay show had robert and it was very lullaby themed it has a literal spider-man in the background like a human type head with with a whole bunch of eyes and and a big old pointy fang so like a spidery evil spider-man with webs behind it and a very cool animated looking robert as if it was done in like a really cool graphic novel so it made me wish that oh yeah it'd be cool if they had more like actual tales of robert graphic novel or something or an animated series where he's like fighting crimes and playing shows and (laughs) who knows but it would be very cool this artist should definitely get the gig if the animated series ever takes off and even the show even though it was pretty quiet across the board i don't think anybody really had anything negative to say though so hopefully everybody there in paraguay had a great time and it lived up to the past shows and uh winding down here is the penultimate show of the shows of a lost world latin america leg tour so um i also believe it was only the second time they ever played in paraguay so that's worth noting and very cool so the last time being 2013 from what i could tell if anybody knows differently feel free to correct me on that but it looked like that was the last time and only other time they've played there so very cool that they're Getting another dose of the cure this late in in the career, but um, as we all know, sounds flawless, arguably better than ever. So, all right. So from Paraguay, we head into the final show, Bogota, Colombia, and uh, it's gonna take place on December 10th, last Sunday, the tour finale. And um, as I as you've noticed, probably in this episode, I'm calling this um, Bogota Part One because next week I will have a conversation for you where Jorge and myself talk about his experience at the final Cure show of the tour as well. Um, and I mentioned before he was also at the Argentina Buenos Aires show earlier in the tour, so Jorge um, has has seen two on this one and is from Colombia and currently living in Argentina, if I got the facts straight. So he was returning home to see the care last weekend in Colombia. And uh, once he gets his back from his travels and I wrap up this hectic week, we are going to touch base and have a wonderful conversation, no doubt. But that will be Colombia Part 2. So what could be in Colombia Part 1, you might ask? funny you should because i received a wonderful contribution today from our buddy craig and his wife kate that are uh, from the u.s and they traveled to columbia for this show craig is an awesome dude he's been such a huge supporter of this podcast for years i feel like it was from the very start of this show when he first reached out and uh reassured us that this whole thing was worthwhile and uh and gave me the confidence to keep it rolling all these years. So I'm forever grateful and had the privilege of meeting Craig at one of the meetups in New York. I believe it was before night three. It was all starting to 
be a bit of a blur now, but um, it was night three and it was a wonderful time. I wish we could have hung out longer. I had, had a real good time talking to him there. He was also at the Merriweather show, closer to his home base, but i um, still bummed out that we didn't get the cross pass for that one. But yeah, he's totally one of those Cure fans I've, I've talked about before where you instantly feel like you've known him your whole life and I could hang out with anytime, anywhere, I'm sure, and have a blast. So hopefully there'll be more opportunities on the horizon. And I uh, can't say enough wonderful things about Craig, but before I get all hippy-dippy on you guys, let's listen to how amazing his time was in Bogota just recently with his wife, Kate, not only experiencing the last amazing show of this tour, but uh, some other interesting things that happened along the way. So take it away, Craig. Hey, Gavin and crew. This is Craig, and I'm with my wife, Kate. Hey, guys. And we wanted to give you our tour update. We just saw the show last night, and we've been in Bogota uh, since Friday. Yeah. So I, and I think you'll understand why in a little bit, but I wanted to go kind of in reverse order and talk about the show first and then talk about our, our general experience while we've been down here. Uh, so we got to Movistar Arena last night around... What was it? Six. Six or so. Um, I think the the tour sent out an update that the cure would go on at 8.15 and that slow dive was going to go on at 7. So it was super easy getting there. We took a taxi. Uh, we walked across a sky bridge over to the sports zone uh, where there's a huge Movistar arena but also a huge soccer stadium. And the vibe in general was, was super cool. Everybody was very chill. Um, there were really no lines except, you know, kind of where you would expect it. A little bit of security getting in um, to the arena, but everything went really smooth. It couldn't have been any better. Uh, once we got in the arena, uh, Movistar really is like kind of a perfect, in my opinion, it's a really perfect size. for. I agree. A, it's absolutely perfect. Yeah, for a show like this. And we had standing uh, floor, floor tickets and where we entered was just right behind uh, the uh, soundboard uh, that, that was set up. So we got a drink or so uh, and walked around to look for the merchandise area, which we finally found, which is hilarious given the other experiences I've had on this tour with merchandise, where I've waited in almost an hour in line for a poster or t-shirt here, I was, we were there maybe five or 10 minutes. I actually bought one t-shirt and then bought another one uh, for my daughter. So uh, it just kind of funny. Everything was just very chill here. Yeah. And that really made things in the experience even better. So we were on the floor, probably mid, mid crowd, um, just a little, maybe closer to the side of the keyboards. Uh, where Mike was set up. Um, Slow Dive was, was great. Uh, they've got a few songs that I really like. I've seen them a couple times. This is the first time Kate's seen them. And I think I think you liked them. Yeah, they I were thought, great. Yeah. And she, the the woman in the band that's back, she made the show, like, it was awesome to see yeah. with her. she was really animated with the crowd. Um, and it was, it was a lot of fun. Um, after Slow Dive went off, um, we, we moved up a little bit, uh, but weren't trying to get necessarily close to the stage but just kind of in a comfortable viewing area uh and as we were watching the crew set up i mean obviously we saw uh eden uh setting up the base for simon uh we noticed this guy who looked very familiar this large german man <laughs> who, who was bald with a long, long beard, beard. <laughs> uh we saw him on stage and then we saw him again kind of in this area up above the stage looking down on the crowd and he becomes important to the story uh in a little bit kind of the second half of 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 the experience uh the cure go on uh it was a very standard set list as as kind of would be expected at this point they're they're kind of down 
at the bottom of their fuse. But, <laughs> running a marathon, man. Yes. God bless them. <laughs> uh, and the altitude, by the way, in Bogota is no joke. Um, it, I still am not quite myself <laughs> <laughs> and haven't been since we arrived uh, on Friday. But um, we just walk very slowly and try to avoid <laughs> hills as much as possible. Um, so... This, by, by pictures of you, you could really tell Robert's voice was, was not what he was expecting or any of us were expecting. But, and I've had that experience with him before um, a couple times when I've seen him, but he always makes the best of it. Uh, the band had super energy. Um, they look like they're having fun. Yeah, a lot of fun. Simon was skipping across the stage from left to right and just interacting with everybody. Um, so you could... You could tell they they were excited about the show, but also excited that I think that they get to go home soon. So <laughs> agree. Um, but the crowd energy was so it made the show so much fun. Just the crowd like, was incredible. I was telling Kate last night even that um, I haven't seen this a crowd kind of this locked in um, since all the way back to like the Wish tours. That was the only time I remember literally everybody singing every lyric and just having a great time and dancing and just really really made the show that much better it was almost as if you didn't have to worry about kind of how the cure was performing because the crowd just carried them away it just like from some difference from some other shows you could just tell everyone was a true fan and like super local crowd versus um some places we've been where there's tons of british people tons of americans this is just like i don't know it was a very cool environment it's also to it was to me it didn't feel as old of a crowd as, yes. as I've experienced in the past. I, I mean, even though I'm old, we're old. I'm old. We're all both old. Um, and it, it just, there was a ton of energy. I mean, there were people, and we had moved around. After about halfway through the first set, we dropped back a little bit closer to the sound, the soundboard um, just to get some space and to just kind of soak it all in because it, we were, I was watching the crowd almost as much as I was watching uh, The Cure. It was just that much fun. What's, what was the song where everybody had their cell phones out in the upper decks? Um, I asked you if you'd ever seen that before. Do you remember? Well, it, they did it twice. They did, they did it during In Song, which oh. was the second time they did it, which really was crazy. But all the cell phones were out, and they were waving them around like stars. Um, and by the way, even with Robert's voice as it was, In Song is it, probably the best version I've, I've seen of that. He was really going for it, very animated. Um, with his arms stretched out, you know, most of the time he was singing. It, it was it was incredible. He was very cute. Yeah. So, uh, as I said, really standard set list. Everybody can look look that up. Um, I think it was almost exactly the same uh, from the last couple shows. The Movie Star Arena. Every, every seat, it was a great seat in that arena. The way it was set up, it's very more circular than it is, kind of like oblong, like arena, uh, like a you know, if it were a soccer stadium or something like that, or a soccer arena or basketball arena. And so just felt really intimate. I mean, the minute you walked through the door, you just felt like the stage was almost right in front of you. Um, so again, another reason why, you know, once we got in that we weren't too worried at all where where we were standing or where, where we would be. And the only thing I'd add is, um, you, I've been thinking a lot about this having the cure take us to countries and places and people we've never seen before it's such a cool way to travel and see the world because you're with people that have that common interest and it's just um like we would have never come to bogota colombia without this and it just is so special but i would come back to 100 i would definitely come back 100 it's it's super cool city yeah um so with that being said we we knew exactly when the show was over and i think a lot of the crowd there maybe was expecting a third encore. Yeah. So we walked kind of back out the same way we came in and the doors just opened and immediately we found a taxi uh, and was on our way right back to the, to the hotel. The, the, by far the easiest time I've ever had <laughs> getting back from a show. Uh, there were, have been times in Europe where I literally thought we were not getting home um, <laughs> and that we may have to walk. Uh, so it was gr- just a really awesome experience. Can't say enough about the crowd. The Bogota fans were just uh, uh, off the hook. They were crazy. It was really fun. So interesting thing about the taxi ride home was about halfway back to our hotel, and it was only about a 15-minute yeah, ride of that. Quick. One of the reasons why Kate 
picked the hotel was its proximity to the arena um, and generally it kind of the area that it's in we, I, I've never been to South America and you know we hear a lot of stories about specifically Bogota and I know that another reason why Kate chose the hotel is it's in a pretty safe area more than safe I mean it's a super nice area yeah so so like I said on the taxi ride home um, about halfway the, every, the all of traffic gets kind of diverted and pushed over as this huge motorcade kind of flies by and, and I I, I'm not exaggerating when I say that this was probably only maybe 10 to 15 minutes after, literally after Robert walked off the stage. I looked at the time in the cab and it was 10.59 yeah, when we so, were in the cab. I mean, it, it, we, we thought we'd be the first ones home, but that, it turns out that that changed because that, that, um, the motorcade, the motorcade was actually the band heading back to the hotel which was the hotel that we were staying in. And now this kind of brings me to the second half of our experience. So, it, so as I said, we, we got back to the hotel. We noticed the motor, motorcade pulled into the hotel. Um, and as, as I said, we, were, we had known since Friday, that, or we had suspected. No, we actually absolutely we knew, knew. We knew. <laughs> Friday that the band was staying in, in the hotel. Um, when we got in Friday, uh, our flight was a little bit delayed and, and we were super tired. Um, so we went to the hotel, checked in, dropped our stuff off and went down to the, to the uh, bar uh, restaurant area, which is a really small kind of little area right in the middle of the courtyard of the hotel uh, to have a drink and, and to eat a little bit. And there, when we walked in to the bar area, and I don't know, was it like 8 o'clock or so? It was later, it was like 10. Oh, okay. Um, there were, again, there's the, the huge German guy with two other German guys that were just as big and just as bearded. And just um, as bald. And just as bald, <laughs> yeah. Uh, sitting at a table next to us. And then there were uh, four or five people sitting kind of at the bar. Um, and I don't, I'm not sure how this happened, but I had no idea that... Uh, Jason Cooper and Reeves Gabriels were sitting at the bar. Um, I only knew that... Well, your back was to the bar. Oh, that's true. Yeah. Oh, that's a good, another reason. Yes. Yeah. But we could hear a little bit of English being spoken. Yeah. And they just all looked like they were something to do with either the cure or just music in general. Yeah. And I, th- I thought, and I think I mentioned this to you, I thought, and now as you reminded me that that was... Reeves, I thought that that was their tour manager because oh, yeah. I kind of remember what the guy looks like um, with glasses and uh, kind of gray, hair, great short, you know, gray hair. But turns out that that was Reeves. So we're done. <laughs> um, we had a few glasses of wine. <laughs> More than a few. <laughs> and as we're leaving, we stand up uh, to walk out. Out of the corner of my eye, I see Jason Cooper walking out the door as well. And I. I I don't know what, what <laughs> you came were over me so fast. You were like, take a picture. <laughs> so I I walked next to him. I said, "Hi, Jason. I'm Craig," uh, or something. I don't know. You played um, like you blacked out. <laughs> yes. And I said, "What well, you know? I'm a huge fan. We'll, we'll be at the show Sunday." And and uh, I said, "Would you mind if we took a picture?" And he said, "No, absolutely." So we took a picture. Um, and. He's walking away, and as he's walking away, he said, I'll see you at the show Sunday, which I thought was nice. But the awkward moment is that we're all taking the same very tiny elevator <laughs> up to our room. We were on the fourth floor. They were on the fifth floor. Um, and so we kind of had to wait, but then it kind of seemed really awkward. Um, with, and the bald guys kept getting closer and closer. <laughs> to us. Like, to us, yeah, as... So like anyway, a, as a threat. <laughs> yeah. So anyway, that, so that happened. You know, I was over the moon. It was crazy. Um, I, 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 you know, again, just kind of speechless. The rest of that. Well, that night we went to bed, and um, I don't know if you said it explicitly, but it all cl- locked in that the bald guys were their security. Yes. <laughs> yeah. Yes. Um. So, the next day. Um, so this was now, so Saturday. Yeah. So we get up, we get up late. We're, um, didn't really do much. We were just kind of walking around. um, Shopping. Yeah. I was down at the hotel lobby 
I was charging my phone, kind of sitting on the sofa, waiting for Kate uh, to get ready and come down. And I noticed Perry walk out the front door. Um, and I kind of saw him through the glass. And I, Gavin, I think I sent you a picture. Um, he walked around the side of the hotel and walked over to the fans Aww. and signed a bunch of That's merchandise. So cool. And one guy even had a guitar that he pulled out and, and he signed it. Um, and he stood there for a long time kind of talking. There was a lot of laughing. Uh, so he sounds like a great guy as well. So that, that was another kind of super interesting moment. Uh, so then Sunday comes around. And, you know, it's the day of the show. And I, I always get really weird. I always joke to Kate that, you know, we'll wake up and I'll be like, we can't plan anything because we've got to go to the show tonight. So <laughs> I'm just a very anxious traveler. Um, so we got a recommendation to, uh, for a, a lunch spot that was really great. It's, um, you know, maybe a 20 minute walk yeah. um, down a really kind of really busy and not. I wouldn't say scary, but there's like, a lot of action. Yeah, it's a street <laughs> and a lot not not the nicest street in in Bogota. But so we finished our our lunch and our uh, giant pitcher of sangria. Yes, we did have that. Uh, food was great, and we're walking back to the hotel again. It's the same street that the hotel's on, and it's a very busy street with very narrow sidewalks, and so much so. There's a couple of places where you have to step off the sidewalk. Buses are going by. And uh, we get about halfway back and I look up and standing, walking in front of me is Simon Gallup coming, walking our direction um, with a woman. And I, the same thing happened. I literally just grabbed my phone. I don't even make eye contact with Kate. And I'm like, oh my God, I got to get a picture. You said, get ready, get ready. And so I didn't want to, you know, scare him or anything <laughs> he's fun. tiny he is tiny he's but a tiny little guy i um I, as i saw him he, you know obviously we make eye contact and we kate and i kind of stop and and he walks up and i said oh my god simon you know a huge fan i can't wait for the show tonight thank you so much would you mind if we take a picture and he said no of course and so again to take a, a couple pictures and what, what was yes. cra- crazy to me is it, it was like 3 p.m the day of the show yeah he's just like chilling taking a walk <laughs> yeah just fine I, they maybe they were walking to get something to eat or something but it was literally just walking down the street um <laughs> we walked back to the hotel and uh oh i should also mention that another reason uh, there were there were a few fans who were lingering outside of the hotel oh, yeah. um probably since saturday at yeah. least is when i recognize it but all, less than 10. Yeah. Maybe. And like very chill. And yeah, yeah. Maybe four or five. Um, whereas when my buddy Ernesto and I were in, um, I think it was floor, no, it was Bologna. Um, we just, by chance, we walked by this hotel with, with probably 200 people standing out front. Wow. And was just a, a mob scene. And, and of course we, you know, we stood there waiting thinking maybe something was gonna happen, but we left after you know a few minutes, but, but this was very chill. Um, I have had been very fortunate and blessed to have run into members of the cure. I've never, I always joke that I'm chasing them, but I'm more, more or less, I'm chasing the show. Um, I think I've mentioned before that I, I have run into them once in, uh, at Austin city limits, in fact, it was only, it was ten years ago to this day um, that I I met Robert Smith and and got a picture with him. Uh, and it was ten, actually it was ten years ago yesterday that I saw the show in Austin City Limits. Now that I think about it, um, anyway, so we were got back to the hotel, kind of chilled for a little bit, got ready to to go see the show. Um, and then that, you know, takes us back up to the show. When we arrived uh, on Friday, the the it's about a twenty minute ride from the airport, um, and you you kind of come over this kind of canal and highway area, and Movie Star sits there, and it's just this amazing sight to see it with the backdrop of the city. There's ten million people in Bogota, and it sits, you know, kind of with just surrounded by mountains and. It just was a super incredible experience. Um, Even just getting into the city, much less the show. Um, And as I said, the show was great. I don't know, 
how this experience could have been any I know. any better or more so memorable. So um, we did try to we did try to get one last look. Oh yes, at there yeah, yeah. it was clear. So the motorcade comes screaming in. So they're, they're basically entering the, the hotel the same time we are, but from the underground uh, parking garage. And so we're sort of at our elevators, but then we're kind of rushing back up to our room to drop something off and see if we can maybe grab a drink at the bar. And so we kind of hustle back down, but try to look cool, which we were yeah. not. And the security, the German security guys go, the bar is closed. <laughs> well, so, yeah. So I walk in and the guy, the head, the big, huge guy goes, may I help you? <laughs> and I, I was like, yes, I'd like to have a drink. He's like, it's closed for a private event. <laughs> and I took a beat. I, you know, I didn't know, I don't know what to say at that point, but. Uh, <laughs> There's only two say. No, so I just said, I said, are, are you with the band? I never said the cure or anything like that. And, and he said, yes. And I was like, oh, my gosh, I'm, that's amazing. I was at the show tonight. And he said, oh, yes, I know. I saw you, <laughs> which I think was a joke. I don't know. We, we, had, we saw them throughout our whole stay. Yeah, so yeah, yeah. they might have had eyes on. Yes. Uh, so then I, I had said, well, how long have you been with, with the band? Um, he said since 92, which means they were on the Wish Tour. That's which crazy. means I, I would have, well, I wouldn't have seen them, but I, they would have been in, in uh, Maryland when I saw them. Uh, at the cap center uh anyway it was very funny we talked for a little bit super nice guy um i not much else to say about that we we went to bed and i think i slept for 10, hours. 10 straight hours so <laughs> the been whole a great experience, experience. Was so fun. yeah and like craig's been saying it each turn it just felt so much more accessible and normal rather than some of like especially the uk shows that we go to where it's just a crush of people everywhere and intensity which is a you know a certain kind of fun but this was also just like such a cool experience yeah for sure yeah i don't know oh the only other funny thing was mike lord um so among uh, as well as the three german guys who were always around um there was this guy who had kind of long black hair young younger young yeah younger looking with uh round glasses was always wearing a black hoodie with some type of t-shirt at one point it was a cure t-shirt um and he was a lot of times he was talking to the hotel staff and, and others as we walked by. But then it clicked that that's Mike Lord. So he was the one filling in for Roger on keyboards. Um, so as we were leaving for the show, we when we came out of the elevator, he Mike Lord standing there with security. It was clear that they were all getting ready to go to the show as well. And. I just looked at Mike and I said, hey, have a great gig tonight. And he was, said, oh, my God, man, thank you so much. And then you, you just smiling and it happy was, as it could was, be. It, it was almost like he called you back to say, like, thank you. Yeah, it yeah. It was so cute. Yeah, so it just just an amazing experience. I This this will never happen again in my lifetime. I don't, <laughs> but, Wait, tell the quick – oh, sorry. Am I interrupting you? No, no, that's you? it. No. no, when you noticed um, Mike playing and you felt like uh, – Oh, yeah, yeah. That is another – that's super interesting, but – when Roger plays, as everybody knows, on the keyboards, his head's usually up and his head's kind of swaying back and showman. forth. And yeah, I mean, just just a real presence. And you could tell <laughs> Mike was a really focused on the keyboard, the head down, <laughs> looking at every. You know, I'm sure he was under immense pressure and really nervous. But just you couldn't you you could not have told the difference. I, I don't think. Yeah, I mean, no, there, not at all. I, Roger's an incredible great. presence on stage and incredible on the keyboards, but it, it he didn't miss a beat. It, it was great, um, and he looked like he was having a great time also yeah. at the end too. So, yeah. so anyway, I mean that's it for now. Um, again, I really appreciate you guys at the Holy Hour podcast letting me tell my story and letting Kate also tell her story. I was we were talking earlier, I think the first time. Kate and I went to a Cure show was the Curiosa Festival. What did we say? What year was that? 2004? That's when I was pregnant. Four or five. Yeah, 2004. Yeah. Um, and we've been to a, a, you know, a few ever since, and we always have a great time, and it's just a, it's a really fun way to, to hang out, and obviously it's a really fun way to travel. So, again, thanks a lot. You guys look forward to talking to you guys soon. Thank you. Man, oh man, got to meet Jason and Simon, even had a Perry sighting out in the wild. And the bodyguards, got to hang out with the Cure's bodyguards too, doesn't get any more awesome than that, I think so. So, super happy for you guys, well deserved, and uh, thank you so much for sharing 
all the experience with us here on the podcast. I did catch uh, the Instagram stream of the show, courtesy of Spider-Man himself, so that was nice. Thank you so much, Spidey, if you're somehow hearing this. It was uh, definitely spotty at first, but definitely settled in as they've been doing around the middle. And uh, as Craig said, not a huge deviation in the set list, but still... 90% 90% songs that everyone would have in their dream set list. So uh, look to be an amazing show. Um, I'm sure we'll dive into the actual set list a bit more when I talk to Jorge. So I don't want to overanalyze anything there. But uh, very much looking forward to hearing from his firsthand account of the Bogota show as well. And uh, see how it compares to Argentina, in his opinion. So stay tuned, everybody out there, for part two of Colombia. We're going to wrap it up there. And uh, just say a huge thank you to Jeremy and Craig and Kate for sharing your experiences. Really brings it all to life, and we can't thank you enough for uh, sharing that here with us. So before we head out, let's give a quick shout-out to our Patreon again, patreon.com slash Podcast. If you want to join in on the cult, go on over there in the new year and check it out. we got bonus episodes, we got stickers and shout-outs and themed episodes, endless possibilities and goodies. So uh, join us, and it'll be awesome. You won't be alone. You'll be in the ranks of... Craig himself, and Donna, and Jeff Hilton, and Jeff Cortland Jones, Sue, Ben, John, Alan, Allison, Dion, Namicio, Matt, Danny, Coulter, Matt Ford, Tom Johnson, Tom Burns, Letty, John Roberts, Francisco, Jason, Craig Bellinger, Amber, Nicholas, Arno, and Tanya. And wants to remind everybody during this hectic holiday season. But if you or someone you know is feeling suicidal or in need of a crisis hotline, 988lifeline.org is there for you to call or chat online with. Tim suggests that if you are in need of a place to stay, check out the South Congress Hotel in Austin, Texas, Waymore's Guest House in Nashville, Tennessee, The Revival in Baltimore, El Capitan in Merced, California. And next year, check out the Albert in Fredericksburg, Texas, because they're all part of New Waterloo Hotels. Go get a room. And of course, Scott Kruger is over at the Sarlacc Digest, help running the hottest Star Wars podcast in this galaxy. You can check their live shows out every Wednesday night, 8 p.m. Pacific time on YouTube. Dana is a super talented motion designer and animator. You can check out her work at graphics.tv. That's graphics with an X. And see if her animation can help promote your business or project. And of course, Kate over at CureThreads.com is always working hard for you good people over there putting Cure-inspired original artwork on a wide variety of products. Go check it out and also check out her project Cure Arts Collab on Instagram and get in on the next project on the horizon. Lisa recommends if you're in need of a drink, go hit up Dickens in Calgary. DickensYYC.com will tell you all the upcoming shows and events. And uh, if you're a little further south and after the same thing, Jessica recommends you go have a drink at clubnevermore.com where you can also see a great show or event coming on up. So check out their website and see what's headed their way. And lastly, our dear buddy and co-host Chaz has another podcast that you should check out. It's called the X Communication Station. He's hard at work over there with Donovan and Chrissy telling the tales of growing up and life in the church as a youngster. As for us, be sure to subscribe Be sure to subscribe. Can you tell it's getting late? And uh, follow us on Instagram at the Holy Hour Podcast. Go on over to that Facebook page and see what extra little tidbits go along with this episode. And always feel free to drop me a line at gavinconnor at gmail.com. We'll be back next week or maybe even sooner with uh, Bogota Part 2 with Jorge as we wrap up the shows of a Lost World Tour possibly forever maybe this is the absolute end of the tour maybe this is the pause for the holidays and next year we'll see the tour continue on in uh, other parts of the world but who knows as of now we're wrapping it up 
and heading it on down. So don't miss a beat and uh, subscribe. We'll talk to you soon. Thanks for listening so much. A giant thank you again to Craig and Kate and Jeremy for sharing your experiences. Good night and talk hard.